welcome everyone to this session of our AMP Online Masterclasses. These classes are sponsored by the Chestnut Family Foundation. And this class is uh, Scales and Techniques for Intermediate Violin with Grant Gilman. Um, this is a part four of a four part class. And all these classes will be on YouTube for everyone to see um, after it's recorded. And we also have another class for Advanced Violin at 5 p.m. We have lots more classes um, for people that are here now. Julian, you can put your notes in the chat if you have any questions, and I hope you guys enjoy the class. Thanks, guys. All right, so a couple of things this week, a few things, including an excerpt. So the first thing I wanted to start off with instead of doing another scale is instead do some uh, broken thirds. I'm trying to mix up so what I wanted to show over all of these is a variety of, of, of things that are like ways to practice technique, ways to develop technique, um, either through warming up or through studies, something like that. So um, that is not what I wanted to share. Hang on a second. This is what I wanted to share. Here we go. All right. So, this is still from the Galamian. Mr. Galamian with his very, very long, very, very long uh, book of studies. Every scale ever made. All right, so all this is is broken thirds, and, and I was just going to do part of it, but if it's going to be Julian here, then, then we're going to do more of it. I'll just uncover it. Uh, so what this does is he, he not only does the thirds, the broken thirds, he does them in every position. So, uh, so what we'll do is we'll start off doing these in fours as I have them bowed, um, in the first, just in first position. But then as we go up, we'll do them in twos just to, to make it a little bit, um, easier. So Julian, why don't you play along with me, but I'm going to, I'm going to mute you for now and then I'll. And then I'll, I'll bring you back, okay? All right. So, play through it just simple tempo, just to just to get a little warmed up. So, do di da da di da 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 three e and a four e and a. Something like that. All right. So then, what happens on the next line? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Oh, come on. Which one is it? That's fine. Okay. So. On the second line, so it's in second position. So as you can see, is you start on this C, obviously, right, with second finger. So we want to start off a little bit slower just to get a little bit used to it. But it's all in second position. So let's slur these in twos, and we'll go about half the speed we did before. So D, uh, D, uh, D, uh, D. Uh, so no shifting. Um, I think I did actually. So I didn't do this later. I think I wrote out. Yes. So these are the fingers just for all of the first of every two. I thought that might be helpful. So let's try this. So here we go. So three and four and.
do the same thing, but now in third position, same notes, right? So we just start on first finger, and I don't think that's going to be very complicated, but we'll do the same tempo, same thing, three and four and... <laughs> Grant, we also have Ju um, we have Julie, we have Vincent joining us now. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So Vincent, we are doing broken thirds here. We are slurring in twos. Um, you're starting in the middle of it, but maybe you'll be able to catch on here a little bit. We'll just try a little bit of this next one. We won't do the, the sixth and seventh and fifth positions, but let's try at least fourth position here. So what we're going to do is this part right here, helpful. right here. So the top finger, so starting with second finger on E, on the G string. Now that's up here. Right, so the first two fingers are going to be two, four, and then three, one. One being first finger on the on the D string, right? So we're gonna go slow and slur in twos, right? So here we go. So three and four and. So, anyway, you would progressively go up and play all of those positions, and then as, as Galaming is wont to do, he will say, play them in every single key and do them in all of these different bowings. So, the other thing he would, would be useful, besides doing them in other keys, is to extend the bowings. So, even if you took the very first one, you could do them in fours as we did, or you could do them in sixes, which would be even a little more confusing. <laughs> Right, you have two per per bow, or you could do the entire bar, so to speak, in one bow. Which, of course, is much easier when you can use open strings. Right, and then even more complicated is when it's triplet type of thing. So. when you're in a different position. See? It's that complicated. So, anyway, that's the kind of thing that you can work up to um, doing. And then this is all on every string. Then the next thing, of course, you can see down here, he says to do is do it all on one string. So you do the same thing, you just do it on one string, and then there's basically two or so thin basic fingerings that you do to do that all on one string. So, who would like to do a little bit of this um, maybe in this uh, fourth position, Julian? Yeah. Also, Grant, uh, Miles has joined sure. us. I saw so that, yes. the whole crew. Right. In second. In second position? All right. Uh, no, not second position. I was just saying one sec. But I'll, 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 do, it, I'll do it in fourth.
can see it. Good, 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 good. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know. I'm sure it's it's probably pretty tiny on there. One thing you got to be careful of, especially in these in these upper positions, is is those distances. It, it's uh, this is one thing he's really he's really preparing you for is that all of the distances, all of the the steps and half steps change, right? They change in such subtle ways all over the fingerboard, right? So that's what this prepares you for. So you want to be careful of where they are and how far apart they are. Especially when you're like climbing over the instrument, playing on the G string and the D string in this very awkward position. Can you try just from the bottom at the, at the beginning once more? really low, that F natural, right? That F natural. Very low. Yeah. Yeah, that close. Right, right, good. Yeah, yeah, it was just the is the same is the same note, uh, ironically, right? The, the F natural again. Right, right, right. It's those F naturals are kind of weird in this particular key, right? Um, good. Very good. Yeah, and, and the, uh, the thing this also starts to start to prepare us for, if you, if you haven't been doing it already, but as you can see, it's even though you're not really doing it, uh, you don't necessarily need to block your fingers. You don't necessarily need to block your fingers in this shape. It does allow for this shaping of thirds, right? So it prepares you for the the exercise of starting to do scales in thirds, right? And doing doing double stops, right? So that's what it starts to prepare for also. Vincent, are you there? Yes. There you are. Awesome. Do you want to try try one of these? Maybe just the, the one in first position? Sure. Um, and if you want, because this is not exactly... If you want, you can, um, come on. Why? Is that oh, slur four or? Sorry? Is that slur four or? Um... Yeah, slur four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. All except for one note, because you played it correct on the way up, but it's the one at the top. So the low one on the E string, right? It's just that one. But other than that, it's fine. Do you think you can go a little faster? Faster? 
Right, right. So that's that's how it happens. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that necessarily beyond the going up in positions, right? Because you're already you already have that concept in mind, right? And then as you start to do it more often, it becomes a little more uh, easy under the strings, and then you can kind of start to push it, right? Uh, under the fingers, sorry. And then you can start to push the tempo, and then it it brings up your agility a little bit, right? That's what it's that's what the, what it's meant for, obviously, beyond just being, you know, normal scales. Miles, you gonna give it a shot? Yeah? <laughs> Which one? Whichever one you wanna do. And you can do you don't have to do them in fours either. You can do them in twos or separate, whichever one you want. Good, good. The B, B natural on the G string is a little bit higher, but that's great. Do you, can you try to do maybe two, slur them in twos? Is that possible? So it's a kind of a, it's a relatively easy other way to do a, a scale, right? At least in this first position, you know, and then as you, you can apply it orally, you know, to the other positions and it's not that easy to pick up like, oh, oh, this, this was the wrong interval or something like that, right? So it's relatively easy to do. I'm trying to, to talk the, this way about the, the Galamian because the Galamian is kind of, this book, if you open it up, if you just open it up and nobody ever talked to you about it, you might be like, what the heck is this? Are you kidding me? You want me to play stuff in this thing? This is a monster. I, I will never play the violin again. You, you know, you might react that way, and that would be a perfectly legitimate reaction. I had that reaction at one point. So, but it's not all like that. Some of it is that scary and not for every single person at every single moment. But some of it is accessible, right? So you just got to pick, pick little bits of it. All right, good. So that's just that's just one more warm up to be possible. And what we're gonna do next? Oh, seven. All right. Now this is this is something totally different. That's the wrong book. Where is it? Nope. That's the same one. Okay. So check. Office eight. There we go. All right, so this is, who, has anybody heard of Sevchik? No? Okay, good, good. Now, most violinists that have, that have uh, uh, studied for a while will hear Sevchik and cringe. I can see why. I, I don't see, yeah, yeah, exactly, right, yeah. Uh, so I, I blocked out some of this. This is not exactly what it looks like, but because I didn't want to overwhelm us just for talking about this. So this 
particular exercise, all he wrote really that we have, most of the stuff that we use, they're all exercise books. They're not, they're not like the Kreutzer in that the Kreutzer is actually supposed to be musical a lot of the time with some technique stuff. The Sepchik really is just exercise stuff, like a whole lot of books that are just... like for hours and hours and hours and hours. So, that can be a little tiresome. Now, the thing is though, it's extremely useful if you can use it in the right way. So, what this is, is this is a series of exercises meant to help you hone in on shifting, right? His, his way of giving you little bits of, of music to, to practice over and over again in every single position or most of the positions on every string um, just tiny little shifts every size of shift throughout the whole thing you'll see it goes every single shift all the way through starting from a second all the way through up to a tenth I think all right, well above an octave so so what we start with here is just a second, both a major second and a minor second, all right? So all we're going to do is we're just going to play these little things. I only had it go through, it, this only goes up to fourth position, and all of these shifts, they're only a small, a small distance, either a major second or a minor second. That's all they are. So let me give you an example. So this is the very first one here. So what I circled here... This is, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. Some of you will be familiar with this. So this, this Roman numeral 4 right here, this refers to the string, meaning the fourth string, meaning the G string, right? So that's why here, it's the third string, the D string, the second string, the A string, and the first string being the E string, right? So this is play on the fourth string until I tell you otherwise, which would be the third string here. Right. Like I said, I covered up a lot of the rest of it just because I didn't want to have the rest of it in here. But so, so let me let me play you a little bit of it, and I really want you to, if you if it's possible, I want you to watch what my hand is doing. Try to get in the right spot. All right, I want you to watch what my hand is doing, and, and so that you can see the mechanics of the shift. And this is what he wants you to to focus on. All right, so. So for every time there's a shift, I'm going to let something be very slurpy, if I can. I'm going to like drag that finger and it's going to sound like it's a, a gliss, you yeah? Now there's two reasons for that. The first reason is I don't want to go very fast because I don't want to give myself any possibility of missing the shift. The second reason is if I'm sliding like that and getting every single bit in between, I can't be tense over here between my thumb and the rest of my hand. I can't hold it so tightly and also I wouldn't be able to do it, right? So it makes sure that this is free to be able to move and everything can move with it, all right? So then, after you play the first one, you just go on to the next one. The other thing you're going to figure out pretty quickly with these exercises is that you've got to be very aware of where the steps and half steps are. He does suggest, just like Galamian does, he does suggest to play these in different keys. But for now, it, won't, it really won't matter. You'll still, have, no matter what key you play it in, you're going to have to be aware of where the steps and half steps are. So 
assuming that you're playing them as we are, playing them all in C at the moment, you've got to be aware, is it a step, is it a half step all along the way, right? It's not always going to sound right, because there's always going to be a point at which you're going to play an augmented second, or you're going to play, uh, you're going to have some kind of a, a, a tritone or something. So that's always going to happen. But for the most part, it will sound, it will likely sound quite um, tonal. All right, so if you can, let's try to play the first three together. All right, so just try to play it with me as much as you can. You're all on mute, so, so don't worry about how you sound between you and your cat. And here we go. So very slowly. G -a -d -a. does after that is it just keeps going up and up and up and then it goes way up the G string but I just took that out so now we're gonna move over to the third to the D string and play these three that are on the D string I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger all right it'll be the same thing except the steps and half steps will be in slightly different places all right so let's try this one <laughs> sorry about that okay here we go ready on the D string and we'll go up to the same thing on the A string same thing and a little bit of did you notice on that one we had the, the B natural all the way up here so we have this distance between F natural and B natural right big 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 distance right so we're gonna have a, a one more of those here I think all right so on the A string starting on B natural all right and That's all the way up on the E string, and then probably the easiest place to shift on the E string. Here we go. So, now of course this one starts with the low one on the E string. Alright, here we go. Ready, and... Alright, 
So that's, that's the basics of what this gets into. So if you have some or even a, quite a bit of, of experience with shifting already, then this starts to refine it. If you don't have very much at all, or very little, or or none, then this starts to give you a taste of it, right? So who wants to try a little bit? And remember, the virtue is not in doing it correctly. The virtue is in trying it. <laughs> Who's up for it? Also, the Boeing doesn't matter either. I just picked this Boeing because this is usually the most convenient to do it in, in beats. Anybody? How does it feel, you guys? Is that a volunteering? <laughs> Is Julian volunteering? Yep. Yes, looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Julian. All right. Um, I'll do the one on the A string. Oh, the A string? Mm -hmm. All right. So wait, like, what was the tempo? Like, uh, it doesn't matter. Just go, just pick one that's steady. All right, I did ba di da di da. Very good. You want to try the, the next one on the E string? Sure. So you can see how at this stage for you, where you're at right now, this is not necessarily as difficult to get through. But of course, if you're really, really listening, you can start to pick up on those little tiny inaccuracies and start to hone in on just that accuracy of getting the same tiny shift correct more often than not, right? So it gives you that opportunity to do it, although it's out of context of some kind of, you know, musical context but it's still it's it's musical enough right it's it's mm -hmm. similar to some kind of musical you know excerpt to, to give you the the possibility of of simulating what it would be like in real time right, right. so very good very good anybody else i'm not going to force everybody to do this so if you don't volunteer i won't force you to do it this is very weird so last class last chance <laughs> Vincent, yay! Thanks for raising your hand. Awesome. Which one do you want to try? The second one on the D string. D string? So, so right now, it doesn't matter as much because these are a little bit simpler and the shifts aren't very large. But you can see how, hopefully, you can see how 
eventually, especially on this last one. Really dragging out those particular moments where they where you have to move the hand is going to make a big difference, especially when it's right when you have to do an octave shift. Right, it's going to make a much bigger difference that your hand knows exactly what that distance is. Right, so. Can you just try the last one again? And just make sure, um, try to make the, um, I think it was the, this, this interval here. Make sure it's high enough when you get up to that D. Definitely high enough, yes. <laughs> good, very good. Very good, that's the idea. Miles, you wanna try it or you wanna sit this one out? It's totally fine either way. I'll Ooh. try it. All right. Which one do you wanna do? Uh, the, on the third one. The, uh, on the, on the D string? Or on the A string? On the D string? Yep. So, so that's the notes, right? That's the actual notes that are written there. So now you can see the, the fingerings on here, right? Let me make the, the first one pretty big, right? So this is, it's good, and it's pretty awkward to try to do them, but can you try to do at least this first one? So when you get to that, the second time you play the F natural, you're gonna move up and play that with your first finger. Right, instead and then second finger, and then fourth finger on the B. And then four, three, two, two. And then two again, one, right? Can you try just those fingers? And you don't have to worry about slurring any of them. You can just play them all separate. Here, let me, I'll fit, well, as you do that, I'll, I'll try to fill in the rest of the, uh, the fingerings. Four. Yeah. Yes. Good. Now, try one more. Try one more. So now for the next one, you start off with your first finger on the F natural. Yeah. First finger up to so up to third position on the G, and then fourth finger, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the point. That's the point of this exercise. It forces you to do these strange fingerings, not just because you have a just because they want to be mean. Though maybe subject wanted to be mean, I don't know. But also, what it gives you is once you start to do them enough, it gives you all of these other tools. You'll be going through a piece that you want to play, like we're going to see in a second. Um, oh, no, I ran out of time. But uh, 
what you'll see is that you'll go through new pieces and you'll be like, well, how can I, how can I play this so that it's easier? I'm telling you guys, one of the biggest secrets about playing any instrument is we work really hard on trying to figure out the easiest possible way to play, to be the, as lazy as possible. I've had like students tell me, they're like, well, maybe lazy isn't the word. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but I call it being as lazy as possible. So we figure out the, it, it's probably the, not the best word, but it's probably more economic. We want to find the most economic way to play as possible so that making the musical part happen is as, as in focus as we possibly can so that the technical thing only serves the musical thing, that nobody notices the technical thing. So if we make it as lazy as possible, we figure out all these other possible finger, fingering things. If we have like five or six options, then, then we can make the musical thing happen and we have a whole bunch of ways to do it, right? I'm sorry, it sounds like my daughter's being tortured, but she's really not. She's actually torturing her sister. <laughs> so, but, but that's, why, that's why we go through this kind of torture stuff, you know, on the small level. But the thing is, even though these, these sessions were focused on the technique stuff, that's great. Though the purpose is only ever to serve the musical portion. So you can't leave the musical part always for later. Obviously, we can't make the music happen if we can't play those notes. But you can't just leave the music for, okay, when I learn the notes, then I'll learn how to make the music happen. Well, yeah, but if you only ever leave it for the end, then you'll never get there. Because we're never going to learn how to play all of the notes, notes perfectly. Certainly not by the, you know, not in this lifetime. So, so you've got to always keep it in mind, how does this need to sound eventually? And then figure out the technique that goes towards making the music happen. So don't forget that. So this all is nitty gritty, but this stuff becomes more interesting the better you get, the more music you get, the more musical you get, and the more you start to hear, the more possibilities you start to hear, the, the more this start, does start to become interesting, even though right now you're like, yeah, this stuff is not, and I, I agree, I agree. When I was your age, I was like, this is not what I want to be playing. I want to open it up and play Brahms right away. I don't want to play this crap. This is just, yeah, I mean, who wants to do that? You don't want to do math. You want to build a rocket ship, right? Who wants to do the math? You want to go to the moon, right? That makes sense. But if you're going to be the one that's in the rocket ship, you got to know all the math. So, it's, you know, it, you got to do the work in order to get there. So this is the work, but it becomes more and more interesting the more you get your focus on the goal. So good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this series, Grant. And Miles and Vincent, how do you guys feel about, do you think you've gotten better over the past four weeks? Learned some, learned some things? Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Any highlights, any things you want to share? Vincent, you too? <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's like, been cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been cool to see them play over the past four weeks and get better. And yeah, thanks so much for doing this class, Grant. And Absolutely. We'll be on YouTube. So, to wrap up, this is part of an AMP Online Masterclass series um, sponsored by the Chestnut Family Foundation. We have another class at five on Advanced Violin. All of these classes are on YouTube. And yeah, we hope to see you guys at another class soon. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Grant. Hi. Thanks, Julian, for being here. Thanks, guys. I probably. Bye. See you too. Bye.